Assalamu alaikum guys. Um, my name is Ibrahim and um, today I just want to have a little chat with you really about my story. Um, try and do as much detail as I can. I don't want to don't talk about it too much because you know it's the passport. I feel like I owe it to you all guys. So um, here we go. First question. What was my life like before Islam? Right. I was a born Christian from um, a place called Blackpool socially deprived, not many opportunities there. It's actually nationally wide renowned for drinking and partying and scamming people and all that stuff. There's a lot of good people there, but there's not a lot of opportunities, you know, there's not a lot of good opportunities and good influence, most importantly, everyone drinks. You know, it's really one of them places you just gotta like really stay in your room if you wanna avoid trouble. And um, yeah, so my mum, she's from Hull, my dad's from Preston. So um, they're both Christians, born Christians, they never practiced it really. Obviously my dad went to the church when he was a kid, I went to the church when I was a kid. You know, sang Hosanna and all that stuff. I never really felt anything when I was in the English church. You know, it was more like a PG party. Honestly, it was a PG party, everyone's singing and dancing, you know. Do you know what, yeah? Um, I'm thankful, I'm thankful for studying the Bible. As I know it, to my understanding, when I was a kid, you know, did my confirmation, Holy Communion, I was baptised as a Christian. So I was a devo I wasn't a devout Christian, but I was a proper Christian, yeah, I was a proper Catholic. But I didn't really know anything about it, just the Old Testament and the stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all that stuff. Who them guys? I know. But um, yeah, anyway, I never really felt um, a connection with God as I knew him in the Christian faith. I was very lost. Most of my life I was very lost. And... Um, as soon as I left high school, well, but as soon as I went to high school, I stopped, uh, I stopped bothering with the church pretty much. I stopped going there. I kind of did in, in school. I was just more bothered about playing football. Just like born Muslims, same thing. We're born in it through traditions. It goes in one ear and it comes out the other one. So that's that sorted. <sighs> when I was in high school, um, my dad was quite ill. He's quite old. So, um, you know, my dad was running on short time and um, he was always drinking and partying. Wanted to give me a, spend some good memories, good times with me. At least he thought that at the time. And we did have some good times, I'm not going to lie. You know, I was always drinking in high school. Started smoking at a young age, 12 years old. Um, started smoking in year seven. You know, I started smoking other things. I'm not going to mention. And um, it's not, not important. Started drinking. That's what everyone did. It was normal to me. It's normalised. This is what life's like. Getting tattoos young, it's normal, you know, where I'm from. I went to school in Fleetwood, you know, so I was a bit of a coddad when I was younger, near the docks. Um, my dad used to party all the time, and, you know, we used to go to the pub, so I was always in the pub with my father, you know, um, drinking with women at the age of, like, 14. I met my baby mum, I met my girlfriend, at the, I met my ex-girlfriend, the, the mother of my child, when, um, i say it was, like, 17, we got together at 18, so it's completely legal. And um, she was like 10 years my senior, but again, stuff like that's normal, you know. I never went to school really. Um, Dad always up partying, a lot of drinking going on all around me, everyone, everywhere I looked, there's drinking, drink, demons, you know, and it brings out a bad side of me. I don't like drink, I don't, I'm not drunk for many years. And there was a lot of party going. There was a lot of partying going on. I was a party boy. I was a party boy, and um, it was normal to me. It was normal to me. I didn't think nothing of it at the time. You know, I also do other things, but I was a party guy. So my dad was my best friend. Literally, we was both we were both troubled together. My dad actually um, he loved me being a little bugger. I was quite naughty in school. I was always a naughty kid. Uh, you know, and he'd praise me for being naughty. I'd get sent home from school, he'd be like, come on, Joey boy. By the way, my birth name was Joey, Joseph. Come on, Joey boy, come on, Joey boy. He loved it, he loved it. He was always pushing me to be a rogue, pushing me to be a rebel, because, um, you know, that's the way he wanted me to be. But I love my dad, I love my dad. He also wanted me to do well. I think he just knew the direction I was going in at the time. But, he, you know, we watched a lot of Godfather together, you know. We, not saying that, but you know what I mean. We watched a lot of good fellas and stuff, so it was all good. It was all good. When I was uh, a student, right, so when I left school, I had my son. Um, about 18, about a year later, two years later. And um, I became a father a week later. My dad fell sick. 
and he had a brain hemorrhage and died, you know, died next, you know, he died near me, um, so really, really, really damaged me, really, really messed up my, my aura, my persona, and um, from then I saw life a different way, it was very, very dark, I stopped caring about the world, I really, really turned sour and black and into a pit of abyssal depression, you know, it ruined my family, it ruined me, it ruined my son's it ruined me being a father it was at this moment i tried to go back to the church i tried to pray to i tried to find some sort of solace some reconcile i needed help i needed help i had no guidance i lost guidance you know i needed help from my father i needed help i didn't have my father i couldn't seem to find it i couldn't i'd, I'd kneel down in the church and i didn't feel anything no help, no one there. Even when I go to church, they go there for themselves mostly. I was really lost, I was really, really lost. I'd always studied history and religion, by the way, guys. Whether it was Mormonism or evangel evangelicalism, I don't know how to say it, but I mean like different subsects of the Christian church, you know, Protestants, and we'll talk about that later. And, um, you know, try to understand religion because I needed some sort of structure, routine, I needed some sort of faith. I didn't. I never wanted to be like everyone else around me. It never interested me. Everyone partying and making money at the time. It didn't interest me. I just. I wasn't that person in here. But that would soon change. I was always interested in religion and pamphology and history. Whether it was Norse religion, I studied it. You know, I loved it. I loved the stories. I loved the stories. You know, and whether it was um, Hinduism, uh, you know, Ganesh, Shiva, you know. Bakasura, I like it. I like the stories. I was always interested in other people's culture. Uh, back in Blackpool, where I'm from, it was one of the... Not much culture going on there. Um, there's some Kurdish, the Turkish who live there, Romanians and stuff, but... You know, in school, I never, I was, it was all white people, you know, we never really mixed culture, none of that, none of that. It always was in Hull City. I used to come here every, every month, every weekend. Loved it. Never wanted to leave here when I came here. As soon as I was old enough to get the train, I came. But, um, you know, it's quite, um, there's a lot of segregation in Blackpool, closed-minded people. Um, when I lost my dad, I fell homeless in Blackpool. I stayed at um, uh, lots of hostels. I don't want to go into this, right? Lots of hostels. I was like Aladdin, you know. <laughs> I should have got a job, but I lost my IDs. And it was just like a barrier to progression that I couldn't seem to overcome at the time. And my mental health was all over the place. I started mixing in with homeless people nasty people and um, soon soon had some sort of influence on me and tainted me a little bit i became like aladdin i started stealing jumping trains stealing cropping bikes and all that stuff i don't want to go into it again but i did that for food i honestly did that for food i didn't that was it literally you know did that for food i've been all around the uk glasgow birmingham london homeless of my choosing, I chose to be homeless. I didn't want to be like all my friends around me doing naughty, naughty things. I, because my dad would have been disappointed in me. Same as getting face tattoos. I got them after my dad died. And, um, you know, I think he would be disappointed that I ruined my little, little beautiful face, but it is what it is. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. So that just sums up really about my past. Okay. So I don't really want to go into any much more detail about that. That's all you need to know. And um, let's go on to the next questions. Well, back in my younger days, when I was at school, Omar and Waid, the own shops, the own shops, and um, you know, and um, he was a good man, even though he didn't practice. And I and I wasn't no, I wasn't oblivious to the truth, right? I wasn't oblivious to the truth. Islam, Muslims, they had good families, good relations, financial stability, just everything, just good wives, you know, loyal. And they was um, serene and free and clear in their own mind. There was, there was, they seemed at peace. They seemed at one with themselves. They knew what they needed to do, you know. So he teach me every now and then about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would teach me about his life, and he would teach me what it means about the pillars. He would teach me what it means to be a Muslim, you know, to be a good person, and it's a way of life. And you know, he would teach me about the prophets. He'd teach me about Muhammad, he would teach me about Noah, Moses, and these, okay, so these prophets, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these prophets, uh, prophets that I was very familiar with in the English Bible, the King James Version, so 
but the, we'll speak about it later anyway. So that was my introduction to Islam, Omar and Waid in Blackpool. So, you know, I started studying, start, not studying, I started learning and researching about Islam. Um, I fell homeless, homeless again. I went back to my old ways, lost. I ended up going back to Birmingham of my own choosing um, to start again in Blackpool. Everything reminded me of my dad and I couldn't seem to, I was just crying in a ball all the time. You know, I couldn't seem to like sustain my life. I couldn't seem to be happy. I couldn't seem to be um, a good father for my son. I was letting grief and depression. You know, they say it takes seven years, eight years for depression to um, not go away, but to, to deal with it and live with it. And it's very, very true. It's been eight years now. Mashallah. And basically, so I've gone to Birmingham, homeless, and I'm, um, I'm sleeping outside the bull ring. And it was um, just after Ramadan, so there's loads of Eid parties going on. I'd gone to an Eid party, they feed the homeless. And um, this is where I met Mossin. I met him at an Eid party. And, um, you know, I, they was giving like free haircuts and just feeding people off their own back with not, nothing in return. They didn't want no reward. They was just doing it off their own intentions right we didn't want nothing in return and i just thought i wasn't used to this everywhere everyone who i met and i lived through life tried tried to like figure me out you know tried to like check me out and that you know and that's what it's like you check each other out and you try and get take 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 what you can you take what you can you know and i was, oh, I was in awe i was in awe and i was besotted i thought i want to be like this this is a, this is how i wanted to be i didn't think things like this existed you know so um, yeah, that's where I met Mossin at an Eid party, and I told him about my um, my knowledge of Islam at the time. Anyway, you know, and I had nothing to do with Islam, but he was quite impressed of like my own research and understanding off my own back, you know. So we stayed in touch. We stayed in touch. I was sleeping outside the bull ring. All I had was a turtleneck. I lost my clothes for being homeless in the past. I lost everything. I've lost everything. I lost my dad's hair. I lost my dad's belongings. You know. And I was sleeping in a turtleneck outside the bull ring. Put it over my whole body, shivering like, oh, you don't know what it's like to sleep in cold, cold concrete. Some of you do, and full, oh, whole horrible, horrible. It actually hurts your spine, and oh, it's bad. But um, yeah, Mossin, right? So he had this charity organisation where they helped the homeless, and he got me accommodated. He got me accommodated. Jazakallah, here, yeah, Mossin. Barakallah, Fiq. You know, and he accommodated me. He accommodated me. He got me somewhere nice. Got me fed. Got me clothed. He got me clothed. He got me fed. I was very, very happy. Very happy man. Still couldn't believe it though in my head at the time, thinking, Nah, there's some, there's some ulterior motive here. What's going on? What's going on? You know, after being in such a savage place like Blackpool, where everyone, oh, no, didn't believe it. You know, he never, he never at this time taught me anything about Islam until I asked him. I was very, very curious. I'm, I want to learn everything about the world. I'm like a knowledge sponge, just sponge everything. I just want to know. I just want to know. And I want to become a better person as well. Like I said, with the good, um, good families, good relationships, you know, good marriages, you know, and just being at one with yourself and being content and feeling at peace and um, like a place of belonging. I've longed for that my whole life. That's why I didn't give up because I knew. I never give up hope because I knew there's a place for everyone, and there is. If you're watching, there's always hope, there's always a chance, so don't give up. Anyway, so um, I started um, studying off my own back about Islam. I started, um, I did start reading the Quran at the time. I was just, um, I was studying Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I was learning the um, attributes and the names of Allah. You know, what it meant to become a Muslim, I didn't just. I didn't just revert like that, like, oh, I'm going to become a Muslim now. You know, it didn't happen like that. It didn't happen like that. You know, they'd always feed, feed me. They'd take me out in Birmingham. Oh, yeah, I started experiencing, right, what it means to become a brother without being a brother at the time. Because they knew I was getting into the fold, you know, and a lot of his friends were going out his way. They're going out the way. They're showing me Dr. Zakir, Zakanir. Um, I you know who I mean. I can't really say his name. I forgot. You know, when I was, I was um, watching Dali, Dali, Lawa, Dali Awa, Dali Lawa. Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa, that's it. You know, and I was watching these like um, Muslim um, debaters and stuff like that. And I was, I was getting really interested. These me men of great knowledge. Sorry for stuttering and pausing. I'm pretty nervous right now. Anyway, so I really looked up to Mossin like a father figure. 
Um, you know, I lost my dad, a very vulnerable guy, by the way. You know, obviously, I'm a young lad, I've got no guidance and stuff. I have now, subhanAllah. You know, and I'm, an old, I'm older now, I'm older. But I mean, back, the, back then, I was pretty, like, pretty naive guy. And, um, you know, anything that anyone would tell me, I'd probably think it was true. But I promise you now that these guys, no bad intentions, never tried to hurt me, always tried to bless me. You know, and I and I'm at this moment in time I knew this was the only way of life that I've seen and witnessed that works. And I want a better life. I don't want to go in and out of jail. I don't want that life. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. So um, you know, uh, I think it was um we went to Green Lane Masjid and um, I asked uh, Mossin if we could um do the Shahada. And I wanted to become a Muslim and study and practice. I knew this was the only way. It's the only way for me. I knew this. It was the only way that I could better my life and just become a better person and, you know, just repent and redeem. I needed to do this because I'd been suffering for six years. You know, I was ready to off myself and just jump off the North Pier and do a triple backflip. I had enough of life. I promise you now. I swear down. Wallahi. You know, I had enough. Um... Mossin had a son, you know, I, I, he's a place in my heart, he's a part of my deen. He actually um, recited the Shahada for me and, uh, you know, did that in Green Lane. Just me and him and his son, you know. I need to go get a witness to testimony and statement because, you know, it was just us three and um, it was a few other brothers who witnessed it as well. I'm going down there next week. I hope I can find him. And if not, we'll sort it out. It doesn't matter. Everything's on paper these days, though, right? And um, yeah, his son recited the Shahada and um, we picked the name Ibrahim. Um, Ibrahim was a prophet that I was, Abraham, you know, peace be upon him. He was a prophet that I was familiar with, so I like the name Ibrahim. I wanted to change my name because um, it represented a new start, a new me, a new new life. I didn't want to be reminded of my past because the past doesn't matter, you know. It only matters today, the present and tomorrow, that's all that matters. We don't think about tomorrow, we'll take each day as it comes. So that, that was the moment, that was the moment when I, through good deeds, I uh, reverted to Islam. There were so many brothers around me who was going out of the way and treating me like family. And I wasn't even, a, I wasn't even a Muslim yet, but that's part of being a Muslim, just to be nice to people and to be a kind person. And I loved the way that, Muslim was a powerful talker. I loved the way that he, he like held himself. I really looked up to him and um, he was a man that I wanted to be, you know. In Blackpool, bad men, you know, bad things, bad teachings, and, and I didn't want to be that kind of guy. So that was the moment that I wanted to be Islam through um, good deeds and uh, through good, just good deeds. That's exactly it. That's all it was, good deeds and having nothing in return. You know, I wanted to be this kind of guy. This is the kind of person that I wanted to um, strive to become, inshallah. When I did my shahada, I felt reborn, rebirthed. I feel like a new man, alhamdulillah. I was a new man, uh, for once I was clean. The first time in my life I was clean from everything. Um, I didn't take, didn't smoke anything, didn't drink anything, you know, and I was walking around with, uh, listening to Nasheeds in my um, earphones. They bought me a, they bought me a juba. I was wearing the white juba. I felt pure. Oh, I felt pure. It felt good. It was the only time since my dad died that I cried. You know, I promise you that I felt like I had a heart made of stone. Uh, I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't feel nothing, you know, but Honestly, this great revelation in my heart, this great feeling, empowered, empowered. I felt really, really good. I felt really good. I felt really, really good. I was in Birmingham, I couldn't pay for a haircut. Everyone would take me for food every day, you know. And when I was in a better situation, I was going to do the same. That's what we do in Islam. But um, I just wanted this brotherhood. I just wanted this, you know, all my life. I started going to the masjid. And um, it's quite nervous being a revert going to the masjid, by the way, guys, you know, there's a lot of trials and tribulations. Allah's going to test us all the time. Allah, he'll test us. I went to the masjid, it was fully Arabic. I don't even, I didn't know what they were saying. I just felt Allah, I just felt the presence. There was something, there was something serene about it. There's some, some serious sense of solace there and I could feel the power. I could feel, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, you can't understand, but I'm still getting... I was still getting the blessings for going there and just trying and um, there was no revert classes at the time. So basically what happened was, there's a lot of um, charity organisations and because I turned Islam, I was going all around, blowing up around Birmingham, around Birmingham and everyone was talking about me and um, 
I remember like one of the guys tried to get me in a car pretty much right and then tried to like record me and try to this do this what I'm doing to myself trying to exploit me put it on his charity page so we get more donations and stuff you know Muslim for whatever reason or you know for whatever reason right at the time we were in different mo we were in different places different times he's got his own life he's got his own family he can't look after me forever can he you know so mashallah alhamdulillah and um Oh, it was a bit hard in Birmingham because I was a revert and it was all new to me. I was going through this new process and instead of... Um, so basically instead of experiencing Islam and, and reading the Quran and studying it myself, I ended up just listening to people. I'm like a baby and I'm taking, absorbing all this stuff in. Saying things about my mum, saying that she's your mum, she'll always love you but you can't speak to her anymore. You know, you should, your mum, no. Where are your family now? And it was all very, 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 very like misconstrued they all had the interpretation of religion right you can treat other people who are not islam you don't need to seek forgiveness in allah for mistreating them if you do or you know and all this stuff and saying basically um but if you if it's a muslim you have to seek forgiveness in allah and i was like you know just be a good person at the end of the day they was telling me things about my family about how they'll always be my family and you know and i get where they're coming from i get where they're coming from but my mum's always going to be my mum at the end of the day and she comes first okay no matter what, and this is the only life that I'll have with her, inshallah. So I'll make the most of it. But it was telling me things, which, you know, and I ended up, I ended up just leaving. They ended up just pushing me away, and I ended up going back to my old ways. And I tell you what, yeah, it was the worst thing that I ever did in my life. I shouldn't have gone. I went back to my old ways as a revert. I thought, ah, I turned my back on Islam and Allah at the time, I tried to, it's all, I tried to, just got back to my old life, but it was always there, it was always there. I ended up just teaching everyone what I'd, what I'd learned anyway there, but, you know, Allah punished me and tested me. I ended up becoming ten times worse, the levels were getting higher, I was getting older, and um, I was really, at this point, I'd opened my heart to, like, people, you know, and I was betrayed in a way, in a sense, in a sort of sense, I felt like I was betrayed. And, um, you know, and I got even more sour. I got even more depressed after that. I thought, wow, I finally found something. I finally found a way of life and wow, it's happened again. Back to the old country roads, you know, and I was even more depressed than before. I was very, very heartbroken at the time. So anyways, you know, I went back and it was a big mistake. And um, so after I did my Shahada, I went back to my old life. And, um, you know, Allah guided me back, but it was only then I realized how good Islam and I could appreciate the beauty and the teachings and the way of life of Islam, alhamdulillah, and how better my life was going, and it was. You know, I'd never been so clean and serene and at peace in my mind. Honestly, I'm glad that I went through this. It was a test of Allah. It was a test. It was definitely a test, and I'm really happy that it happened because, like I say, like I say guys, I really got to appreciate the beauty of Islam and I did anyway from coming from a life full of haram and full of all these bad sins and all this stuff, all this stuff. Yeah, so guys, I really got to appreciate the... and just really, really see from my own eyes, like, the comparison again, you know. And I thought, do you know what, yeah, I've learned to become a better person a little bit. I didn't, I was lying. I was lying, I didn't learn anything. Um, I learned, I learned something, but I mean, you know, I was only in, I only in, entered the fold. I was in the introduction of Islam, and um, you know I didn't practice for very long. I didn't practice for very long, and I thought I'd be okay without Islam. I did think that. I think that this is about being open and honest. This interview, and it was one of the worst mistakes of my life. So um, anyway, through all this, a few years later, I come back to Islam. I come back to Islam. I'm actually practicing on my own back now and um, I see the beauty of the Islam subhanAllah alhamdulillah and um, I thought I'm going to give this another go my life was in peril again and I wasn't happy with myself and I thought when was the only time when I was happy when was the only time when I was free was when I was a practicing Muslim and when I am with my brothers and when I'm praising make praise for Allah you know, I feel like I get a protection, a veil of aura and protection around me and being blessed, you know, and I wanted to experience it more. I never really give it, give it the chance that I should have given it, 
you know, I never stopped loving Allah. I always believe Him. I know, I've always believed in Him. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Sorry, there's guys behind me. And um, you know, yeah. So I ended up, I ended up realizing the only way to do this. I can't do it in Blackpool when all my friends are around me doing all this stuff, drinking and smoking, partying, partying in Blackpool. I have to cut everyone out. And as a revert, I'm telling you now, guys, you have to discard your life and the bad influences around you, or else they're going to drag you down. They're going to drag you down. They're going to get into your head. People was calling me Jihadi Joe, terrorist. I was getting bullied. Not physically, of course not. But I was getting verbally. And it hurt me. I'm, I'm only human. I've got a heart. I've got a heart. I've got a heart. So what I realised I had to delete all my social medias. I was a well-known guy anyway. Delete all my social medias and just embrace and just um, submit my life to Allah. I've never fully, fully, fully submitted my life. I always had reservations to keep hold of my people and the past, my friends. But this time I made the decision, the hardest decision of my life. Just rebirth. I moved to Hull, back with my family. My cousin, who is a revert, it's the best decision that I've ever made. I've never been so happy. I've never, all my dreams are coming true. They're all coming true. Since I started making practice, my life's getting better. I've got so much brothers and sisters around the world. So much support. I'm free in my head. Uh, Solace is here again, but better than ever. Honestly, I feel like a champion. I feel like a champion. And I feel like nothing can get me down, but it can and if we think that we're free from haram or we're clear from any tests then, or any tribulations and trials then that's when we're most vulnerable again so you know honestly reservations is a revert right it's hard to go but it's hard it's hard it is hard but you can't you have to literally discard your old life you know they know what they know you know what you know it's between you and Allah it's between you and Allah it's just, just do you, just do you, do what makes you happy. No one's going to judge you about it either. No one's going to judge you for this. No one's going to judge you. You need to, um, you need to really just, just do you and stop caring about what other people think. And um, since I, basically, since I've become practicing and Islam and Muslim, so, so I've practiced Islam and become Muslim, right? I'm the happiest that I've ever been. Since my dad died, I'm happy again. I don't want to, I'm here, I'm happy. I actually see vision in the future. Actually a good future. I actually see me having a wife one day and a good job and you know what I mean? Like a really good job, a good wife. And I never, I always doubted myself. I never could feel this. Honestly, I feel the best I've ever felt in, in the world. Masha'Allah. You know, and this time, right, so when I come to Hull, I've chose the right people. Um, I've chose the right people. I've got a good imam. He's very good, actually. He's um, English, he's English Arabic imam. And he's very, very good. He goes out his way to help me and, um, also, I'm like, I'm making my own, I'm learning Islam on my own. That's the mistake I made last time by listening to people. I'm studying the Quran on my own. I'm doing it all on my own. So uh, I'm getting my own perception, interpretation of Islam. And it's beautiful and it's beautiful. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, it is beautiful. عشيرتي جميعكم حتى ابنتي لا اغني عنكم فاعبدوا الهكم ووحدوا اذا اعجبك الفيديو لا تنسى الاعجاب والتعليق ولكي يصلك كل جديد اشترك الان